as a kid growing up, I ate just tons of cheese and seafood. Like, so many tuna melts. It's not even funny. I ate so... You don't even know what tuna tastes like. I don't even know what tuna tastes That's like. That's so crazy. <laughs> Hey everyone, I just finished editing this video that you're about to watch and I wanted to leave a quick disclaimer. This video, as I mention in a moment, is directed towards people who are not vegan. However, I do imagine that vegans will be watching this video and from my experience, I have received a lot of judgment and a lot of mean comments. That is why I just want to say that we are much stronger together. We all care about the same thing. We all care about animals. We all care about the earth. We all care about ourselves. This is what unites us and we have way more in common than we have not in common. So if you do want to leave a comment and be a part of this conversation, because that's what this is, I am not writing any laws about any of this. Just do it out of love and out of respect and compassion. Veganism is so much about compassion, so if you aren't able to be compassionate and empathize with your fellow human, then how can you expect to do it with your animal friends as well? So let's just be kind to one another. If the vegans can't get along, how can we expect for non-vegans to ever join our cause and care about the same things that we care about if we fight and are mean and judgmental? Yeah. So I just wanted to throw this little disclaimer out. And for those of you who are not committed to watching a 25 minute video, feel free and speed it up down below in your settings and you can get through the video a little bit faster if you'd like. All right, without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this open chat, open conversation about two very different journeys towards veganism and how we feel about it now. Welcome to a very exciting video. This is really a video that I want to direct towards non-vegans or vegan curious people or people that don't know any vegans or have ideas of veganism that might not necessarily be accurate. I think that what I strive for on a personal level is just to make it more approachable because veganism is kind of a scary concept to a lot of people. So I wanted to include my very special friend, Max. Hello there. This is Max. He's from Juice Master Max. Juice Master Max. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube, so you can check his channel out. But he's also a vegan and we've had had completely different life experiences around our veganism journey so I just wanted to kind of chat with him about that and then we have some viewer questions that you guys asked me on YouTube and on Instagram that we will answer at the end so I think the way we should get started is just to provide a little bit of an introduction to how veganism relates to us so I'll go first as a child, I always wanted to be a vegetarian and I was always asking my parents to let me and they were basically completely against it, very unsupportive, until I was 14 years old and I really put my foot down at 14 because I was about to get a job and I was ready to start buying my own groceries so that I could be a vegetarian. Basically what happened is I became pescatarian, so I ended up being pescatarian for 12 years. For those of you who don't know what pescatarianism is, and no, it's not a religion, it's not Presbyterian. <laughs> I get that all the time. <laughs> so funny. But what it is is basically vegetarianism plus seafood. So I would eat eggs, dairy, and fish. No chicken, no beef. I don't know, I can't think of any other meat. Turkey. <laughs> 12 years later, I finally made the switch to veganism and it has been six months of being like 98% vegan, which I'll talk about later, I think. So I have been vegan off and on throughout those 12 years, but this six month stretch is actually the longest I've gone. So I am definitely coming from a total beginner standpoint, but I love it. Okay, that was right. kind of long. <laughs> so I was raised in a vegetarian household. So 
both of my parents were vegetarians from the time I was born, which was so amazing, but we didn't necessarily eat that healthy. We ate a lot of like macaroni and cheese, pizza, ramen noodles. It was really cool, like I've never eaten meat in my life, which I'm like so grateful for. <laughs> um, and I think it's such a cool thing. But I was always a little bit almost grossed out by meat. It just seemed really weird to like eat like dead animals and I never felt that good eating a lot of dairy and dairy was always kind of weird to me too like oh this is like milk from like a cow like why am I eating this so like I always wanted to be vegan and I think like I became vegan around the same time as you like became vegetarian around 14 I had more energy right away it just felt so good so like the older I got the more I got into it and then I started eating like more and more fruits and vegetables and I felt like even stronger and even better and actually right now I'm doing like raw veganism so I'm only eating fruits and vegetables and I'm like super powered from it so definitely has been amazing cool thank you sidebar we're both from Minneapolis that's actually how we kind of found each other out here just through a mutual friend back home so we were both ra you were raised in Minneapolis I was raised in okay, Minneapolis. so me too <laughs> Minneapolis is like a big like hunting yeah. place like people yeah. are really big into fishing hunting they just love their meat they love their meat out so there it was actually really hard being a kid there because everyone would tease me a lot for being vegetarian yeah. and like there just isn't like that big of a vegan community out there. So that's definitely a challenge so if true. you're not around like like-minded people and like you have pressure from like your family and friends. Yeah, I had a lot of that. At what point did you realize that you were different? Even in like kindergarten, I remember like snack time, people would be eating like their Lunchables with like pepperoni. My parents were very like direct with me, told me like, oh, this is like an animal. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to eat like my animal friends. Did you talk to people about it? I didn't. I want people to do what like feels good for them. And even as like a little kindergartner, I didn't want to like <laughs> tell people not to eat their food. Like I wanted yeah. them to be able to eat their snack. And I think they thought I was really weird that I didn't want their Lunchables. Like, no, I don't. So yeah, did you feel judged by your peers and like your teachers and stuff? Yeah, I was definitely like teased about it. Like teachers would like say, oh, you're gonna be like protein deficient and like kids would like. That's the number one. Oh, that's the number drives one. Drives me insane. And like kids, I remember kids would like try to like slip me meat and I would like catch them and like everyone was like very, um, yeah, it was definitely challenging. Sad. <laughs> Especially as a kid, everyone telling me that I needed protein. Bullshit. Like, you're fine. Everything is like technically a protein. So it's just like a total myth. And like, that's yeah. especially like in America here, but like around the world, it isn't quite. Yeah, in America, it seems like, like we're the that. most carnivorous. It seemed like the older I got, like the cooler people thought it was. Like, yeah. in high school, I got a lot of like followers, and people are like, oh, this is like really cool. I want to try this. Followers? Or like, people would like become vegetarian as kind of like a fad and be like, oh, yeah, it's cool not to eat animals. It is cool not to eat it animals. It is cool not to eat animals. <laughs> Did you ever get into activism? Definitely not like a super confrontational person where I don't like to like get in your face and like tell you what to do. Like I want people to be able to make their own decisions. I like to come at it from like a less aggressive approach and yeah. like tell people like why you're gonna like feel better from this instead of like, oh, don't do this. You're like, meat is murder. We're like very disconnected with our food and just like ourselves in this culture. Yeah. So I don't think people really make the connection, like especially kids like aren't thinking, oh, I'm eating beef like this is a cow. You know, that moment where you have to tell a child, oh, what you're eating is a dead animal and mm. it's that thing that we met at the petting zoo once. What were your favorite meals growing up? Pizza. Um, I love pizza. Yeah, I ate a lot of pizza. I mean, and we also ate good. We ate fruits and veggies, Yeah. but we ate a lot of junk food. I was raised on a fully processed diet of Easy Mac and ramen noodles and frozen pizza. But man, the frozen pizza, oh my God. so good. It's really addictive. Um, it is addictive. It's like once you're eating food like that, it's really hard to stop because we just like crave it. Our bodies think we want that, yeah. even though they don't. I'm becoming more pro-unprocessed, even more than pro-veganism. If we can encourage people to do anything, it's just to make your foods and eat whole foods. I think that's in turn going to reduce your meat intake because dairy, so processed. Well, I'm curious like how you feel now versus before you were vegan. Do you feel a lot of like physical changes? Just yes. It's like, it's so insane. I always knew I was lactose intolerant. I believe everyone is. I just don't think the human body is designed to digest dairy. It's 
it doesn't make any sense. We are supposed to drink milk from our mothers and then we move on. And why would I drink milk that is designed to grow a cow? It's just like, I am not a cow. I do not need what a cow needs. Sorry, that's a tangent. The biggest differences I've noticed are actually in my head. Mm. Dairy can create a lot of congestion for people, and I have terrible sinuses. I was approved for sinus surgery at one point in my life. I decided not to go through with it, again, because I've basically fixed myself. I couldn't breathe through my nose, and I was always doing this. <laughs> that oh, yeah, sound. I did that a lot too growing that up. That sound, I did throughout my entire life. My friends kind of would poke fun because it's just this quirky mm. thing I did, but I don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also was just burping constantly and that's disgusting. So I'm like very grateful that I don't eat dairy anymore. You expect the obvious things like, oh, like weight loss, better poops, but really it like transformed these quirky things about myself that I was dealing with for my entire life. That was kind of the biggest difference, but I just feel lighter. What did you notice? I was always stuffed up, and just like endurance, I noticed like my skin got a lot clearer. My eyes are like much clearer than they used to be. I remember being like really fatigued a lot. So much more energy, like really pretty much right away after going vegan. Where do you land as far as those kind of controversial topics like honey, shoes. I mean, I really do believe in just doing what's going to feel the best to you. Yep. Honey is from like a really, really good source. I mean, if I know the people who are producing it and yeah. they're treating the bees really good, I mean, I probably wouldn't like be the bee too boys. opposed. The bee boys are great. Yeah, so I buy like a bee product from them and I've used honey every once in a while. The thing that where I've fallen really short, which I do find as a disappointment, when it comes to things like pastries, mm. where there is an egg in there probably, or butter, and I just don't see it, and I probably don't taste it, I've, I've dabbled in some donuts while I've been out <laughs> here. But then I feel like crap. It makes me feel like garbage after I eat it. So there have been a few missteps where I'm not technically eating vegan, so that's why I said earlier that I'm at like I don't know, 90% vegan or something. The thing that I like to tell people is, I think just reducing is an amazing step. And trying that black bean patty at a restaurant instead of getting a burger that one day, or switching from a steak dinner to chicken, and then going to fish and like doing it in layers and taking baby steps because the footprint that we're creating through the meat industry is just massive. I have friends who are vegan at home and they don't purchase any meat products or any dairy or anything, but when they go out to eat, they might order whatever they want. Or people who have vegetarian Mondays or something, I think more than once a week is probably good, but at least it starts that conversation and it starts that thought process because I guarantee it if you start dabbling you're gonna get hooked. You're gonna feel really good. You're it's gonna the, feel so good. The snowball that becomes the avalanche where it's like once yeah. you start you're not gonna want to stop. Yeah exactly so that's just what I encourage people to do is just take a step back and be more considerate in what you're putting into your body and just trying it. You do like intuitive eating at its finest and working towards knowing what your body's actually craving instead of what your body thinks it's craving and those addictions, because addiction is so real in our diets. Paleo works really well for a lot of people. If you feel amazing on paleo, good for you. You're eating a lot better than a lot of the planet. Well, paleo is kind of meat heavy, but I did paleo not meat heavy and I felt amazing. Play around with how you take care of yourself and you're gonna eventually get into that more intuitive mindset of giving your body what it wants. And more often than not, you're gonna realize that that leans towards plant-based because our bodies feel so good on it. I really like what you said about just like baby steps and just taking it one step at a time. I mean, nothing in this world is black and white. So just like, right. just try experimenting a little bit and see how you feel. Nurturing your body as much as you can. It just, yeah, it's the best. It's the best. Take care of yourself. Our bodies are our temples. So if we take good care of our bodies, we're going to just be able to do so much better in every aspect of our lives. Yeah.
now I'm going to pull up the questions that you guys asked. I asked on the community tab on my YouTube channel as well as on my Instagram story. So if you guys do want to be part of this community and part of this conversation, please make sure that you're checking those out. And uh, yeah, like hit the bell button on YouTube, watch my Insta stories, and you might get to ask a question in a Q&A. So I'll start with the YouTube community tab. What are your guys' favorite snacks being vegan? So my favorite snacks are always like whatever fruit is in season. Here in Hawaii, we have so much like amazing like fruit and vegetables like yeah, everywhere. So it's very easy to just like eat a lot of that, so. I'm always whipping up fresh guacamole and it's really yummy. Uh, oh, that question was from Carly, by the way. Thanks, Carly. Thanks, Carly. So Paisley, please, asked, are you cutting out animal products all at once or phasing certain things out slowly? I'm pretty like all or nothing. So yeah. I just like, I'm like, I'm vegan now. <laughs> <laughs> I was just vegan after that. Yeah. Um, but every everybody works so differently. So, like I mean, me. Like, like you. I'm the total opposite. But at a certain point, especially when it comes to something like dairy that is highly addictive, you really need to just be done. Another huge thing for me as far as transitioning from pescatarian to veganism was giving yourself a little bit of that wiggle room and not being too hard on yourself as far as eating vegan junk food because vegan junk food is very real, it's very easily accessible and being someone that was not making any of my own food, I did have to lean on the fake cheese and the fake meats. I was eating tons of grains, tons of potatoes, you know, heavier items, and then eventually my body started to crave more and more fruits and vegetables, which tend to be a lot lighter, which in turn created a lightness within myself. So I think that's another really important thing for some people, if you are that person that needs baby steps, being able to give yourself that time and that phase, as long as you kind of remember this isn't the end goal. This is just part of me getting to where I want to be. There was a phase where I was eating quinoa bowls like constantly with vegetables in them, and then it sort of kind of became salads. So it was like grain heavy to vegetable heavy. So I think that was an important part of my journey as well. Amber asked, what do you eat for breakfast? I'm kind of over overnight oats and smoothie slash smoothie bowls. You eat fruit. I eat fruit. Up. Sometimes yeah. I'll drink some juice for breakfast. If I wasn't going to have a smoothie, I would probably recommend protein bars or power balls. They're jam-packed with nutrients. So that's a suggestion, but I'm super into smoothies. Sorry. Ties. Tays? Sorry about the pronunciation. What are some staple foods for a vegan kitchen? So for me, I mean, avocados are like a must yeah. um, in my house. But like bananas are like a really good like carbohydrate. Like I love to eat a bunch of bananas and go on like a run. Usually I'm like fruit for breakfast, like vegetables for dinner. I'll eat like a huge salad mm. most nights for dinner. Yum. Yeah, my favorite food is kale. <laughs> And people think I'm so weird for that, and I don't know why, because it's so good. I love, love kale. If you find it to be bitter or too tough, just massage it. All you have to do is massage it under some warm water for a couple minutes. I've been incorporating more raw food into my diet. I've been eating two to three meals raw every day lately. However, when I was eating more cooked foods, quinoa, so quinoa, kale, I love just all the superfoods like that, bananas are another huge one. Avocados are, are big for me too. If I was eating cooked food right now, like rice and beans are always like amazing. Yeah. Um, potatoes, sweet potatoes are great staples. I love this question. This is from my cousin Katie, sup girl. Uh, she asked, do you think it's possible to obtain perfect veganism? Or is it just a myth? So I think nothing in this world is perfect. Like we're all imperfectly perfect. But you can do what's gonna be like perfect for you and what's gonna feel the best for you. Yeah. So I mean, perfect vegan to me would just be whatever is making me feel really good. Yeah, that's a really good answer. Technically textbook perfect vegan would be someone who doesn't use any animal products and has no influence over those industries. I would say it's almost impossible, and that's why your answer is so good, is that you don't want veganism to become your obsession, 
Maybe animal rights can become your obsession. That's a beautiful passion to have, but you don't want to obsess over it. And I think that kind of ties into your point, you know, doing the best that you can with your resources. There's probably young people out there who might have been in a situation like me. I did what I could when I was a kid, and now I'm a grown up and I'm doing what I can now as a grown up. And mm. <laughs> you just kind of do, you do what you can, and as long as you're headed in a direction that makes you feel good, find what you're proud of, you just gotta do you. Be perfect for you. Just be perfectly imperfect. Perfectly imperfect. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pull up Instagram now. So Gabby on Instagram asked, what do you do to ensure you're getting enough protein as a vegan? So, <laughs> so <laughs> Which we sort of touched on. We kind of touched on this. So everything is a protein and everything has protein in it. As long as you're not starving yourself, like you are getting enough protein. I feel like stronger than I've ever felt, like just eating like yeah. high fruits, vegetables and I definitely don't feel protein deficient. I can totally piggyback off of that because there were phases a while back when I tried veganism and I didn't stick with it. And it was basically because I was starving myself because you don't realize how your portion sizes need to change when you're eating fruits and vegetables to get the same amount of calories. So I felt like I was eating enough, but I was just calorie deficient. And that is when I felt really crappy. And that doesn't matter if it's vegan or not. Food is fuel when it comes to veganism. You're giving yourself the best fuel possible. You just have to give yourself enough of it. Otherwise, I also put protein powder in my smoothies a lot of the time, but I liked your answer better. <laughs> Oh, one thing about Gabby's question is she said that she's a college athlete and she's concerned about becoming vegan, uh, being athletic. Let me just say, there are so many vegan bodybuilders on YouTube. Just, just search for vegan bodybuilders. I can't think of anyone specifically by name at this moment, but there are so many resources out there to prove that you can have an incredibly active lifestyle and have fitness be your number one priority and maintain a vegan diet. There's a lot of fear around veganism and it's, it's ridiculous. It is. One thing I've noticed about being vegan is like recovery time is so much better. Like if you do a big workout, like you're going to feel recovered so much faster than um, before cool. you're vegan. And then energy is just like another big thing. As a vegan, like I was just like racing a bunch of friends last week and I just like flew past everybody. And I think like I really do it feel like your vegan powers. it's vegan superpowers. <laughs> like I really do feel like it makes you um, more energized, more mental clarity. So you're like able to compete better. It's going to give you that edge <laughs> to be the best. Awesome. Thank you, Gabby, for the question. Thank you to everyone, actually, who wrote me and who have asked questions. I will be making a lot of videos about this sort of thing. It seems like people are very curious or they're, you know, on the same kind of journey as me where I'm still, you know, he's kind of, he's got like a badge of honor as far as <laughs> being a vegan and being even a vegetarian since birth. It just blows my mind. You're also the first vegan man I've ever met, which just goes to show you what Minneapolis is like. I honestly didn't know any vegan women in uh, sure. Minneapolis, so yeah. I think Minnesota just isn't the best. Yeah. But it's amazing how far this movement has come, and I'm so excited for future generations because I think this is the future. We're so in tune with what's best for the world and best for ourselves, and health has become this massive important thing that it just didn't exist in our previous generations as much, uh, at least from my experience. So I'm really excited that this is a thing. Me too. It's cool to be vegan. It's cool to be vegan. <laughs> vegan. Do you have anything that you want to say? Oh, shout out your channel. Tell yeah, me about so, your channel. Yeah, um, so check me out on YouTube, uh, Juice Master Max. Um, lots of juice, health, vegan videos. And I take you guys on some fun adventures through Hawaii. So lots of I'll good. be in a couple She's of them. She's going to be in some of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. I'll have it linked <laughs> down below for you guys, so. All right, cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any follow-up questions, comments, I can't wait to talk to you guys about this sort of thing. I wanna know what your background is. Please be kind. We are all allowed to have our opinions, <laughs> and let's just, uh, let's have a civil conversation about it, so. 
In the meantime, I hope you're all doing very well. I love you guys so much. I'll see you very soon. Peace. Peace. Okay. Oh, you got this. Oh, oh that was a good one. You're that? that. <laughs>